Wrestlers have always been staple characters in any fighting game series. It only makes sense that a genre which routinely seeks to represent fun and unique styles would immediately set its eyes upon pro wrestling, with its over-the-top personalities and spectacular choreographed fights. Tekken was no exception, to say the least. Not only did they put extra effort into grab animations that were often inspired by wrestling, but they also created one of the most iconic wrestling characters. Today's episode on Tekken martial arts is dedicated entirely to wrestling and all its various forms, as we cover three of Tekken's most famous wrestlers, King, Armor King, and Craig Marduk. King is the main star of this episode. Every facet of this character is a love letter to wrestling. But let's start with his looks. King's persona is almost entirely based on the titular character from Tiger Mask, a classic wrestling manga from Iki Kajiwara, who some might know from Ashita no Jo. Just like King, Tiger Mask was an orphan who took up wrestling to support others like him. And just like with King II, after the death of the original Tiger Mask, one of the orphans continued his legacy. The popularity of this character eventually spilled out into the real world, when New Japan Pro Wrestling licensed the character and began a whole new Tiger Mask dynasty within the Japanese wrestling scene. Played by Satoru Sayama initially, the character has since gone through six more iterations, with the latest one being Shinsetsu Tiger Mask, portrayed by Masakatsu Funaki. However, there's another massive influence on King coming all the way from Mexico. It's hard to tell if it's all a big coincidence or a trail of inspiration, but there was an actual Mexican priest by the name of Sergio Gutierrez Benitez who supported orphanages by making money in the ring under the name of Fray Tormenta. Sergio himself was inspired to do this thanks to two Mexican movies that depicted a priest who supported orphans by wrestling. These are all quite old school, but there are some more modern connections too. Tekken had multiple collabs with NJPW that gave us the Bullet Club t-shirt and two new wrestler-inspired outfits. Lars got an outfit based on Hiroshi Tanahashi, which also plays his theme song when worn. Meanwhile, King got an outfit based on Kazuchika Okada, which changes his rage art to Okada's recognizable Rainmaker finisher. This collab also went full circle, with Okada wearing King's version of his outfit, complete with the tiger mask. Appearance is just one part of the character, so what about his attacks and animations? Well, to begin with, we got some more wrestlers involved here. To ensure that King's animations were smooth and authentic, Namco invited legendary Japanese wrestlers Minoru Suzuki and Osami Shibuya, and despite developers using motion reference since Tekken 1. With their help, King went from looking like this hey, oh. to this. Hey, oh. Back in those days, King's fighting style could be broadly categorized as a catch style of wrestling, which is all about locks, holds and submissions, and has a lot in common with classic Greco-Roman wrestling. However, as his move list continued to expand, King's repertoire of attacks started to resemble a smorgasbord of various wrestling moves and styles. His grabs are obviously the most iconic part of the moveset, featuring plenty of pro wrestling classics that were invented or popularized by some of the most well-known wrestlers in the world. To list just a few, King has Hulk Hogan's leg drop, Samoa Joe's muscle buster, John Cena's STF, Sting's Scorpion Deathlock, Frankensteiner from the Steiner Brothers, and 
and Scott Hall's razor's edge. But of course, it doesn't stop there. King has every strike you could expect from a pro wrestler. The Lariat. Through Samoa Joe. Oh, oh man! Kali's brain chop. Kali just measuring the Undertaker. There's the big chop! Antonio Inoki's Enzui Guri. Moonsault. Tiger Mask's rolling Sobat. And other classics like the drop kick or elbow drop. With that said, it's easy to see why King is perhaps the ultimate pro wrestling character in video games. His expansive move list is both authentic and diverse, showing some of the coolest things that people love about wrestling. In real life, it takes talented athletes years of practice, planning, rehearsals, and a fair bit of acting to put these fights together and make them look real. But thanks to King, we can enjoy both the flashiness and brutality of wrestling in their full glory. Armor King has stood in King's shadow for much of Tekken's history. Despite having a separate character slot in the first two games, he was borderline a clone of King, with only a few Mishima-style moves and different inputs to make his playstyle more distinct. That all changed in Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection, where he truly became a unique character with a distinct focus on strikes compared to King's massive arsenal of throws. In that sense, Armor King is still rather faithful to the shoot style of wrestling, a style that was developed in the Japanese wrestling scene for the sake of making fights seem less like a scripted display of acrobatics and more like a real fight between two masters of hand-to-hand -hand combat. However, his origins are roughly the same as King's. With Tiger Mask making his debut on the real ring, it was only a question of time before his rival, Black Tiger, would make a debut as well. Interestingly, the IRL Black Tiger is almost always played by foreign wrestlers, with England's Mark Rocco playing the very first iteration. Considering that Armor King's true origin is still unknown, it could be that even such a small detail was still carried over to Tekken. Now, his moveset might be a decent bit more modest, but Armor King still carries plenty of direct references to pro wrestling. Outside the moves we already mentioned, you have Tajiri's Poison Mist. The Great Muta's Shining Wizard. The Rock's People's Elbow. Steve Austin's Stone Cold Stunner. And The Undertaker's Tombstone Pile Driver, amongst other things. Much like with King, his gameplay is a pro wrestling power fantasy come to life, full of powerful blows and over the top drama. More importantly, his existence alongside King depicts a vital side of wrestling that might not be immediately obvious the rivalry. Instead of heroes and villains, pro wrestling uses faces and heels, with both typically acting in unison to create a long narrative of rivalry and struggle, with potential future alliances, betrayals, or other twists that we've come to expect from both the in-game storylines and real-life wrestling. As a fine detail and a nod to specifically Lucha Libre, it's nice that neither of the kings ever actually reveal their face, even despite the Tekken franchise being so heavy on customization. The formidable Craig Marduk made his first appearance in Tekken 4. Fitting the tone of that game, he's a much darker character than we usually expect, even for a series that has a literal devil and family members throwing each other off of cliffs. Unlike most other characters, his entrance was made over the body of another, as he kills the original Armor King in a bar brawl and gets sentenced to 10 years in prison. This gruesome backstory feeds directly into his fighting style, Vale Tudo, which roughly translates to anything goes, 
is a combat sport that fully lives up to its name. What started as a style versus style circus exhibition became a major milestone in MMA history, as it gave fighters from completely different styles a way to go all out and show everyone what they're capable of. For many years, it still served as a way for representatives of different styles to show everyone that theirs is the best one. But over time, the competition naturally evolved to include more mixed training to create ultimate fighters. Marduk shows this well by including a very mixed repertoire that includes everything you might need in the octagon, from basic punch combinations and kicks to takedowns and submissions. But this being a wrestling-focused episode, how does he actually relate to wrestling? For starters, it's very plausible that Marduk was inspired by one of the WWE legends, Goldberg. Their similarities in appearance are fairly obvious, but it goes further than that. Marduk's tackle has a decent resemblance to Goldberg's signature spear. The suplex bomb is basically Goldberg's jackhammer. And in Tekken 7, one of his win poses looks really similar to Goldberg taunting his opponents. But the influence of pro wrestling doesn't stop there, as his throws are once again a treasure trove of pro wrestling classics. The Northern Lights Suplex, the Gorilla Press, the Choke Slam, or the gruesome backbreaker are just a few of them. <laughs> However, to emphasize his sheer overwhelming power, some of Marduk's throws severely exaggerate human limits and have him fling opponents around like it's nothing. Alongside his powerful strikes and overall high damage, it really does a good job of selling his identity as this chaotic force of nature a brute that knows how to fight and takes pleasure in it, as he crushes one opponent after another. As our pro wrestling episode comes to an end, it's tough to properly convey the sheer breadth and rich history of this sport, but we hope that you came out of this learning something new. And if you want to learn how to play as these characters in Tekken, as well as many other fighting games, then also check out that Blasted Salami for regular high quality guides and tutorials. Please check out the link in the description to see more of our videos. And here on Dash Fight, we appreciate your feedback. This series on tech and martial arts is built entirely on your requests. So please let us know which martial arts and which characters you want us to cover in the next episode. Take care all, have an excellent day, and we'll catch you next time.